Welcome back to game number two of TNC versus LGD Gaming. LGD, they took game number one. TNC, they want to be able to tie up the series. Even if they are secure in the top four, Group A is actually locked in already after uh, Secret did end up losing to Liquid. So everyone's kind of locked in their positionings, I think, except for fifth, sixth. But for this series, nothing's really going to change. But either way, TNC still want to win. Of course, you don't want to... You don't want to go into a match and say, hey, it's not a big deal if we don't take away the W. You're you're a TI, you know what I mean? You want to try to do the, the best possible performance that your your team can muster. So TNC coming into this game, going with the Bat Rider. Uh, I like Bat a little bit more as an opener, considering how the last game went, and just considering how few options they really had to kind of take fights to LGD. Yeah. So I think that it leaves you a little bit more open, and uh, the Lycan obviously really good against Night Stalker. We talked about the Howl being useful during any sort of nighttime phase where Night Stalker wants to do stuff, being pretty much better than a Chen heal in some cases, and th this is a much more flexible opening that I think uh, I can get behind. Lycan versus Night Stalker. I'm always down with that. Take advantage of the extra nighttime. Uh, Oracle is actually going to be picked up by LG. So apparently, LG are going to show TNC how to play Oracle. Yeah, but there's what a bat in this game, is. at least. Yeah. I mean, last game, I think that TNC just picked up Oracle kind of haphazardly. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the, the plan was because there was not really a good synergy hero, I guess, besides maybe Dragon Knight that you could really partner with a False Promise. There was nothing to abuse healing because they opened up with Ancient Apparition on LGD. So yeah. you pick that Oracle and you're just like, okay, well, I'm picking this into an Ancient Apparition. Fate's Edict is still pretty good, but there's nothing else that I, I'm really offering in Synergy. This time, LGD has something that is hard countered by the Oracle. Or, sorry, TNC has something that's hard countered by the Oracle. So it makes a little bit more sense. And, I mean, if they want to go fourth ban AA, you can do that. Like, it's, it's not a bad choice if you want to try to get another core that does benefit from the healing. Yeah. If you're in TNC, do you actually switch the offlane now? Do you make that a support bat rider simply because the Oracle is countering one of your cores? Uh, it's possible. The, the cool thing about that is you can kind of save your pick if you want. Although I guess if you're going to be trying to have... If you have to pick up a mid in the next two, then it, it might be worth it to just do it sooner rather than later. Just because you don't want to prioritize picking a an offlane over a mid. But yeah, I, I still think it's possible. I know that a lot of teams have been doing that recently. Just having either one hero in the first two that can switch up uh, roles whenever. Or, you know, halfway through the draft just saying, hey, we got this hero that could potentially go offlane or play support. Let's just swap it up because this hero seems to be better for the draft. Couple of mids going to be banned. TNC banning away the puck. LGD actually taking away the Queen of Pain. One of Cuckoo's really go off heroes. TNC uh. is actually going to go for Rubik. Okay, so... Why? I like Rubik as a hero. Yeah. But, but. I think this is a hard Rubik game already. Primarily because during the fights, there's a couple of ways that Rubik can play the game. You really don't ever want to be the front line. You yeah. always want stuff in front of you that's going to be able to kind of cause chaos so you can steal the spells that you want. I think Lycan and Batrider do a pretty good job of that. So that's definitely something to their credit. I just didn't really see anything that kind of made me think, okay, Rubik is going to be able to get some pretty decent spell and cause a lot of, I guess, disharmony in the fights. The, having the Fissure is one thing. That, that is a very good spell to steal on a Rubik. But other things like Echo Slam, for example, you don't have Aftershock, so it's not like that spell really offers you that much. Oracle yeah. spells are moderately useful to steal. Same with Night Stalker. There's nothing really that I'm looking at besides the Fissure and saying, okay, this is an impactful thing that I can get. I've got it, Draskal. Okay, I'm ready. Rubik steals darkness mm -hmm. so they can use darkness and howl together. They, they, you can ha -ha. definitely do that. It's the one time it's it's actually an okay time to use darkness as a Rubik. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm kind of wondering myself like yeah, what the, the reasoning is behind it. I think it's like I said, I like the hero. I, I love playing Rubik. He's one of my favorite supports. He just he's not really good that that often. Yeah. And he was only kind of made good after the fact with the, the Earthshaker pickup. Um, that's an okay steal. Now Sven, both uh, Warcry as well as Stormhammer are pretty good for Rubik. So yep. uh, again, after the fact, Rubik is being made a little bit better pick as the draft goes on. Um, this Sand King, though, what about that? TNT pick up the Sand King. Is this uh, a Rubik Sand King duo? And Batrider is still our offlaner? Uh, looking at the heroes that LGD have... 
I think it makes more sense than to put the bat in the off lane, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to kill either of them. But during the mid game, the bat rider is going to have a really tough time. There's already a night stalker, so your vision is going to be limited. There's an oracle to be able to break basically any initiation if they're in position. And then there's an Earthshaker as well that can just throw out random fissures to just kind of throw you off. So I'm not thinking it's going to be the easiest bat game in the world. You wouldn't expect that, obviously, first picking a hero. But this one especially is going to be tough. So wait, are you done with the bat rider? No, no, no. I'm saying you because would King Core. I'm saying because it's such a hard bat rider game that I think Zen King Core would make more sense. Okay, yeah. For me at least. Yeah, I'm down with that. And then Bat Rider can kind of support him in that off lane. Just be the annoying like sticky napalm hero giving Zen King the space to be able to hit the yeah. creep wave. I mean throwing a dual lane down there is not a horrible idea. Yeah. Yep, 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 for sure. Uh, last ban out, Timber Saw by TNC. We've seen uh, a couple different Timber Saws grabbed against these Lycans or Sven carries. So Flash Rack, well, that's certainly uh, a surprise pickup from LGD. So a mid Flash Rack, right? Yeah. I would think so. Yeah, there's there's no other way to, to really run this. It is kind of nice, though, against heroes that kind of want to be up in your face. So like Batrider, Lycan, Sankang, they're all pretty close proximity in the fights. Pulse Nova is going to do a ton of work in this game. you got a bajillion disables now. Yeah. You can just stun lock someone to death, even a, a Lycan if he doesn't have BKB. Just, you know, Fissure and Chant into Stormhammer, your Split Earth, lots and lots of damage output. And the cool thing too is that LGD have a good balance of damage. I guess you could argue that TNC are pretty much the same. They have the, the Lycan for the physical DPS and then the other three are magic, whereas, you know, LGD, the, um, Diabolic Edict is not pure magical damage, so you have physical through that, you have Sven, so both teams have a good balance of damage. This time around, TNC have much better heroes for killing creeps as well, which I think is a criteria that nowadays you just have to be able to hit. If you cannot clear waves, your game is going to be very hard. Right. What's left, though, for TNC in the, the mid lane? Because we've had a whole lot of mid laners banned out, and it's versus a Leshrac. Yeah, actually, there are a ton of mids. But has to deal least. with a four-position Night Stalker roaming on you as well. They're going to go for the Marana. Okay. A little bit of a non-traditional mid matchup. Lesh versus... Is this like TI5? Am I watching TI5 right now? Yeah. It's kind of what it feels like. Kind of weird. I think It's the a Diffuse of Blade carry, right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very good against Sven. You can... Even buying Lincolns on Marana doesn't feel that bad a lot of the time. Because you benefit from the regen. Sure. You're going to stay out on the map forever. Be your Manta Diffusal. And do a lot of work later on transition maybe into like mkb or something yeah i think the the marana rounds out tnc's lineup fairly well i'm not sure how i feel about their laning phase because they are going to have the uh support sand king rubik combination they're going to put sam h on the bat rider anyway probably a, a comfort factor for him mm -hmm. just saying okay i play this hero a lot even if it's not an ideal bat game i'm still the best bat player so i'm, I'm just going to play the hero on the offlane and try to make it work if it does end up being the Sam H, Batrider, and Tim Stan King lane. I think they'll be able to still do a little bit of work during the first five, ten minutes. But I'm apprehensive as to how much the Batrider is going to be able to do mid game. If he can actually, if they can both get their blink daggers, that'll really help out the Marana a lot. I think it, it's a very important for you to have strong initiators and frontline heroes for the Marana. Uh, you can't really let yourself be initiated on, right? If they get the, yeah. the blink dagger fan, it's just couple of swipes to God strength. That's going to be a core dead super Patience fast. So hopefully this Brutal aggro duel lane for TNT ranks. does Brutal do very well for Cuckoo's sake ranks. more than many of the others. Uh, meanwhile, LGD are going to be looking at this to just farm Ame up. Farm, farm, farm. Just like last game with the uh, the Morphling. I'm not exactly sure where Leshrac fits in this uh, in this patch. Like, how, how, how good is it as a space creator? How good does it scale into the late game anymore? Uh, these are all kind of mysteries to me since we have not seen a core less rack or even much less rack at all. Uh, I think he's quite strong, actually. Yeah? Mainly because of his talents. Like, if you look at his level 10 and 15, they're insane. Like, yeah. either movement speed or health, both fantastic. 400 mana for a hero who is, you know, he needs mana to be able to deal damage. Very, very strong. And later on, you get the, the extra 300 HP from his 20 talent. Then you either get the Lightning Storm Slow or Diabolic Edict, which I think most people settle for Edict just because it, it doubles, well, over doubles the effectiveness of the spell. And it becomes insane how fast you can like push and, and kill the late game. But you could get the Perma Slow. 
the you perma could, lightning slow. You could get the perma lightning slow. You get as well. Octarine. It's a three second cooldown. It's a three second slow. Don't stop. Yeah, I, I think it's actually four seconds slow, though, because it's oh, one second true. plus the three, so yeah. it's more than 100% uptime if you have Octarine. Damn. Yeah, it seems really good on paper, right? But then against some heroes that have, like, escapes or Lycan, for example. I say Lycan, who yeah, doesn't I, get slowed just, down. He doesn't care. <laughs> but that's why I think Lesh is picked here, because Lycan yeah. is the hero that wants to be in your face. And when you have Pulse Nova and Edict going at the same time, no matter how much damage you do, you're going to get chunked, right, before you right. can take down that Lesh. And it's really... I think a bit easier to itemize on Lesh against this style of team. You know, once you get your BKB and an armor item, and you're good to go. You just walk in there. So Sam H does manage to successfully cut one creep wave and get himself to that level two. Wow. Old 11 actually with the uh, enchant totem first, feeling pretty comfortable about his Rubik Lycan lane. He is actually going to challenge the, the Lycan for his CS immediately. I really like this choice over the, like, the level one Fisher and going for like the Bok or whatever. This this feels a lot better. He's gonna be able to do pretty well, I think, in this if it ends up being more of a supports roaming around situation. Miss stun in the mid lane, maybe. With his first split earth, but it is a very, very small AoE at level one. That's yeah, tiny. 150 radius is nothing. A stun on the old eleven. A little bit of chip damage. Uh, or Rubik is not going to be there in time. Telekinesis. This poor man's shield is going to do an insane amount of work against these supports. They do get the D ward though, so a little bit of a bummer here for old 11. But Rubik just does no damage. Like, I guess with a Howl, that might be enough to supplement. Yeah, with the, the combination of stuns plus Howl, they might have enough damage to bring him down if they do so now. The Enchant Totem Aftershock gives a little bit of space, but they're still going to write him down. One more right click. That's all we need. Oh. They find him. Tim's is going to be the one to collect that first blood bounty. That was a clutch tango. He knew that old 11 was going to juke to the right, so he ate the tree in front of the other tree. Mm -hmm. That gave him vision to be able to get the, the last autos off. So nicely done. Howl coming in huge. This is a level 3 bat rider. His, uh, his lane is going very well for himself. Now, he can't really get too much on the offensive because Sticky Napalm can just be removed by uh, Fortune's End. But... There's no real threat there either. Yeah, he can't die in this lane. He has to, like, dive the tower, I think, to end up falling here. He does need to be very careful, though, about how many stacks he's giving Ame and Yao, respectively. Like, you can't just throw his sticky napalms out 24-7 in this lane. Yeah. Six and eight stacks. So, all things considered, does look like LGD is going to be able to take a little bit more of the win of the laning phase. Uh, mid's going very well for the last ranking compared to the, the Marana, mostly because the Night Stalker was sitting mid so often. Uh, and it looks like they might just be able to kill Sam H with Victoria's help here. He's going to go for the TP out right on top of the cliff. They don't have Void up, so they do manage to get that kill. They, managed, they went for two levels of Purifying Flames onto Yao. Uh, definitely, if they could have seen him, would have brought the... Batrider pretty close to that. Really nice juke. Just getting himself in that one spot where there's no vision. And for now, I think that it's just going to be a lot of moving around from, you know, Victoria and Tim's on either side. Just seeing if they can find anything. A stun into an arrow can very easily be a kill on maybe in the mid lane, especially if he's not topped off. And at the same time, I guess it's a bit harder to kill Cuckoo because he does have the leap. So maybe there will be less pressure from LGD from here on out going towards that middle lane. Oh, the Levin is beating some ass here in this bottom lane. God Dude, that poor man's shield is god tier in this matchup. Like, you can't kill him. He's he's forced Raven to burn through all of his region. Now, he may okay, be he caught be here. Yeah, this is at... the downside of so much aggression, right? Is that eventually you are going to get caught by rotation. With the Howl damage, they're doing so much work. Victoria is going to be able to come down. Goes for the slow onto Raven. But Tim's going to be the one to be able to catch up to him. It does have a Burrow Strike up. Now it's going to come in, try and get some more. They get a hold onto Tim's. Victoria's going to chase him down with a Void. They are going to be able to get that kill. The other TNC members uh, just not really able to do anything. Lycan doesn't have the movement speed to keep up with these heroes. And Rubik doesn't have the damage with the Howl gone away. Contesting gonna... a stack. Mage, time to run. Yeah, he's got no Firefly left. He's out of there. They're wrapping around mid, though. See if they can do anything to Cuckoo. It's an interesting one because he can leap, but it's still going to be held in place for a while. Maybe long enough for maybe to be able to hit that split or stun. And they do manage to finish him off. Victoria dies, though, underneath the tower. And now Tim's gets the stun onto maybe. But with the double null talismans, he's actually quite tanky. So the two supports can't really do much of the threat. Maybe. 
going to go again, but uh, Tim's careful, friend. Oracle does a lot of damage, pull him back, but the TP takes so long for Cuckoo. He's oh, going to have slow. to, he doesn't even have the leap actually, so he's going to have to try and maneuver around some of this. They do manage to get the Bro Strike, finally gets the leap forward, finish off maybe with the extra Star Storm hit onto Yao. Tim survives through it all with Cuckoo tanking the tower, and TNC, despite the very long TP that I thought was going to be ending up in disaster for them, they do manage to make that gank work. Yeah, the Caustic finale so uh, ended up allowing them to catch up at the last second and be able to secure that kill. Really big for TNC to get these kind of like laning phase kills because if you look at the CS, the Sven and the Leshrac are still kind of just dominating. This this Cuckoo Marana has 13 creep kills at 5 minutes. That is not, not nearly where you want to be at this point. So all things considered TNC doing a pretty good job at, at scraping together the laning phase. Maybe if only you had gone to bottom lane. He could have stopped this and maybe even gotten a kill. Old Eleven goes for the double stun, tries to run to the trees, but he knows. Inevitably, death awaits us all. Well, at least he's making a lot of heroes kind of come back to the lane to deal with it. It's probably not the best feeling in the world, but at the same time, Earthshaker doesn't really have a plan B. It's really hard for him to Sam H slowed down, trying to get over to the cliff. Victoria could have actually just chased after him with Hunter in the night. I'm really surprised he just in it. Uh, with the extra movement speed, he would have done a lot of physical damage onto Sam Mage. And then the Void could have finished him off, but does get another Void in now. Sam Mage bumps it back over to the mid lane. They do manage to kill, maybe, the Tim's in 14.37 rotating his mid lane once again. Maybe poor Raven to the mercy of the Earthshaker. This Rubik is level 5 at 6 minutes. Damn. What the heck? 14.37 and Tim's. Like, we don't normally see this dual roam a whole lot. Like, a lot of the time, one support is dedicated to trying to zone out, but together, they're just able to do so much on the map. They're going to be wrapping around deep on this bottom lane. Maybe he's even going to TP. He thought about it last time. This time, he's going to commit to trying to kill Raven. Maybe he's going to hit this split Earth. It's level 3. He has to use the tomb because here comes Tim. He managed to get the stun in. Victoria's going to slow down Raven, trying to get farther back, deeper into the shrine area of LGD. They are going to be able to bloody block Raven in. Looks like he's going to be dead, maybe. Fights up against two. Burrow Strike actually does kill, maybe, but it slays the Sand King first. Jeez, man. This game is just non-stop. 12 kills in a 7-minute game. Basically, every single lane is fighting except for top. And there is still like some contention on like the creep stacks and whatnot. SMH going in trying to, to be as greedy as he possibly can about this laning phase. They might even be trying to set up to kill Yao here. It's it's kind of tough though. Diving against Fate's Edict when your your heroes pretty much only really do magic damage. I guess they do have Lasso in Raven gets the Howl off. LGD, no way they have enough damage to actually take the Lycan down. I want to go back to that, that dual roam. Uh, that you were talking about because that is a very interesting point that we don't see a whole lot of that from the current meta It's usually a little bit more separated that we have this four position who does most of the roaming damage uh, And he couples with the cores to be able to pick up kills here We've got two supports as a duo and and they they showed this very early on to the draft Do you think this is a, in part a reaction to the Oracle pickup like seeing this Oracle and knowing that it's just not really that strong of a rotating hero in comparison to the duo that they're going to be running, the Sand King and, and Rubik, do you think that's in some way a draft abuse that they see a, a weak support here and they're just like, we're just going to go for kills on our support and they won't be able to keep up? Well, they just experienced it in the last game, right? Yeah. I mean, you're basically just saying exactly what happened to TNC when they had the Oracle themselves. Again, the old 11, he's got a TP, but not sure if he makes it out of this one. Yeah, that's a really good Fisher block. <laughs> Cut oh through the God. trees, 1437, might just be able to spot him last oh. second. No, the TP out first. Meanwhile, mid lane, LGD, they're trying to clear through these creep waves so they can get to the tower and get a little bit of diabolic eating damage here. But TNC will stand strong in front of the tower while Cuckoo takes a tier one at top lane. Net worth chart. There are a lot of TNC members looking pretty healthy, even the Sand King at 2100, while maybe suffering pretty badly. But uh, Ame is always the top net worth, it seems, for LGD. Well, I think there's a, a lot of what you said is true about the dual roam and just Oracle's inability to, to react kind of to that. If you're not already in the place where the dual stop goes in, it's going to say last on top. That's an easy kill. But if, if the heroes are already in position to stop the double, even potential triple stun with the Marana arrow coming out from Cuckoo, it's already too late. Like, if you TP as that gank happens, you're not going to make it. Three-man smoke up. Yao, he just 
he had a ward down already, and he's gonna lay another ward. TNC. They, uh, I think they spotted the Oracle last second because they pinged where the ward was. But, oh, Ame. Uh, Ame. So greedy, gonna be trying to farm this Ancients. He's just gonna get popped by all that magic damage. They, they saw that, right? They saw that from this ward. I think, uh, at least I thought they did. Do you think, like, maybe they just thought the rotation was gonna go mid or something? I think it's super dangerous to farm low ground when you see that. Yeah. I, like, regardless. It was so you, greedy for Mame. Even if you think that they're gonna go to another lane, you probably still at least walk to high ground, right? Because it's right there. Yeah. Like, you pull the camp out and you try to stand near your shrine or stand near the, the other high ground. But nonetheless, another solid kill coming in from TNC, just pressuring the map super hard this game. Arcane boots, double null talismans, and a magic wand. Or maybe as he starts building into Bloodstone's second item. I was wondering what the build was. Maybe he's going to be or something. Yao is sitting behind Old Aleppo, but he doesn't have False Promise. And TNC are beginning to corral LGD in. But with the Wolves scouting, they don't really feel comfortable diving in deep, especially since they saw Maybe's TP. Cuckoo doesn't have a leap to be able to get away from this one. So the Fisher sets up the Split Earth. That was TNC this time around being a bit too greedy, trying to force kills and force towers down. But he left aggressively late towards the tier 2 tower of LGD in this offlane. Not entirely sure if he was expecting like less of a reaction, but they, they do have some words in the area, so maybe he felt a little bit safe, ended up putting himself a little bit too far out of position. Gives away quite a bit of gold to this Leshrac, who up until now was definitely suffering. Yeah. Maybe with a few deaths under his belt too. But all this action across the map, and Ame himself still sitting atop the net worth, only with one death, and he can just kind of safely farm away. That kind of aggression, you know, if they, like, waited, say, 30 seconds to make that kind of move, the, the Batrider's pushing out top really hard. Yeah. So at that point in time, like, eventually he's going to force a rotation, then you can go into the knowledge that even if they do TP, you know, it's going to be some sort of four versus four instead of a full-on five. But TNC, I think, just kind of jump the gun a little bit. Really want to be able to force kills while they can, knowing that LGD is going to be playing uh, quite heavily uh, around this jungle area. So if they can take away some of these outer tier tier 1 towers, especially the off lane tier 1 tower as well as the mid tower, you can kind of open up that off lane jungle to invasion a bit more. I think that it speaks volumes about how TNC feel their chances are against like the mid late game of LGD, just because of how little they have to really deal with the spent. I mean, sure, that you're going to be able to get a defusal blade eventually up on Cuckoo. Oh, Burrow Strike. Old Eleven is going to be able to get on top of him with the Enchant Totem. He has Echo Slam, but Ame doesn't want to follow that one up. And it's a good thing, too, because they do have 1437, who stole Split Earth just, just a minute ago from the Lash Rack. Managed to pick up one kill. Ame's going to be able to go on to Tim's here. Split Earth from maybe himself is going to be able to hold the Sand King a little bit longer. 1437. And turns around, just gets whatever damage he can. He throws out the Fable because he knows there's no escape from LGD, who brought four heroes down to this bottom lane. A really nice reaction from LGD. Get a coveted tier one safe lane tower. In the meantime, though, Raven's making the best use of his time. He's in the top lane, he's near the tier two. He's gonna force at least one person on the side of LGD to, to go ahead and TP back. And they're also getting a little bit of damage on the tier one in the mid lane. So it's not as if TNC just lost that hero for no reason. Or heroes. Mass pings. They, they know Sam H is here from this defensive ward earlier. Now Sam H is gonna be able to grab Victoria, which lands into the arrow, but with maybe outputting so much damage, he quickly kills the Batrider and shoes Kuku away. Now, Old Eleven is looking to cut them off, especially since he has the Echo Slam. They've got the control to be able to catch Kuku as well, throws the Fisher towards the Sand King. Doesn't quite hit him, though. Still, LGD take another two members of TNC down to the grave. And they're really just not getting enough out of these scenarios. Like, Raven... Yeah, it's space oftentimes. Okay, they, they force that bottom wave. There's space for the Batrider at top. Here, it's space for Raven to get farmed. But there's only so much space you can create if you're also feeding away kills a lot. I agree. It's it, Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you need to have Raven come to a fight. And if you've died so much that LGD just have an item advantage on you, then it's, it's definitely not worth it. I just don't know what they really do without Raven having like the one extra item and perhaps a BKB. Because can you walk into Sven, Earthshaker, and a Lesh? That is an insane amount of damage. Like normally Lycan wants to walk in, he wants to hit, you know, one hero and just say, okay, you're dead. But if he focuses somebody against Warcry and also having the false promise as well to fall back on, you can't run in. 
it, you just can't. So now you need to wait for like a bat rider pickoff. They're going to be more reliant on their capability of split pushing and trying to force a favorable engagement in numbers, I think, for TNC to feel comfortable taking a fight. We casted a game of TNC where Raven went the same build, right? The Master Manus Armlet. Yes. As opposed to the Necronomicon that's been coming back in vogue a little bit. Uh, I, I, I can feel the, the positives of both, right? I can see the neg negative aspect of Mask of Madness because you're facing it up against physical damage. Book is great against Lush, though. It's and, very, yeah, very exactly. Good. And there's a positive side. A Book would have been a lot better versus the Lush rack. But then you would have Book Wolves against Earthshaker where there's that you know potential for a bigger Echo Slam. Where do you kind of lean on this scale? Which item build would you have preferred? So the Mask of Madness doesn't really give you too many downsides against the magical damage heroes anymore. Sure. So I, I kind of see like the farming capability of it being great. Armlet is just another really cost-effective item. I just think that until he has BKB, it doesn't really matter which route he takes. Like even if he had book, can he can he go in with a book three? No. Because I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can he go in with Armlet Mask of Madness? Probably not. It's it's going to be down to can they outnumber them. Four man smoke up, LGD. Gonna pop the darkness here. Victoria is gonna lead the way to try and find a hero. Raven does manage to get off his ultimate before the silence. Dodges? No, doesn't dodge the split earth, but they do manage to come in from behind. Tim's hit the epicenter, and now the turn from Raven. He baited it all out. Now TNC lay out the trap. Maybe he's gonna die. Raven holding his position around the Lesh Rack to minimize the damage. He's only sitting at half HP. He's gonna hold on to old 11. He can start committing some damage, but as the lasso fades out, he does manage to get the Enchant Totem. Echo Slam hit as much damage as possible, but really, LGD have lost too many members to try and fight that one. Both the Sven and the Night Stalker give up on that engagement. They even had a double damage, God Strength Ame, but there was just too many members of TNC up for him to fight. That's the ideal engagement. First, they're fighting around nighttime because the Night Stalker popped his ultimate. So you get the double benefit of the Howl during that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is LGD were not all there at the same time. So when I say they need to outnumber in order to be able to fight LGD effectively, that's pretty much exactly what we're talking about. Because what if, you know, Yao's able to get his False Promise off onto maybe? Like he was doing a crap ton of damage. He just doesn't have any armor items, so he still kind of got chewed through. He needs more to be able to kind of tank through those fights and get that sustainability going for himself. And Ami wasn't there to be able to pop Warcry either. So they were not as one unit when they initially engaged, and that's why TNC were able to win. So we need to continue with your TNC, just pushing these lanes, pulling LGD apart, finding the, the optimal situations to take the fights. Sam H is getting closer to the Blink Dagger certainly help out if they have that extra form of initiation. Create a whole lot of chaos between the Sand King and the Bat Rider. Oracle may not know which uh, target to be able to throw the False Promise on. Well, Cuckoo has his damage coming along. He has the Dragon Lance, has the Yasha. Uh, I'm presuming to use a blade is his next item choice. I would think so. I don't think I, against uh, the Manta. Against that team, yeah. Manta style just seems really bad, actually. Yeah. Maybe is... he even goes SNY. I'd be kind of down with that. A little bit of boost, and then you could break it apart for the man. I think so. I think, well, he could either do that or just go straight to Diesel. Ame almost has his BKB. It's going to be a, a fairly big power spike. But again, it's for LGD, it's more about making sure that you're all there, and you're all on the same page, and you want to take the same engagement. Because bottom... There was some either miscommunication or maybe was overestimating his own survivability. Either way, TNC were able to abuse it to uh, to its fullest extent. And now they're playing it a bit more passive. They're getting scouted out by the Wolves too. But TNC have full information on what's going on right now. I think TNC, they just played it really well, right? That four-man smoke, they're just running out. But TNC, especially those two supports playing on the hard right-hand side, in this jungle area, so they're able to pop out. Like the first target that you see as a Lycan who's already popped his shapeshift. You know, that that's just really good read by yep. TNC to see what was happening. The gank was coming and just uh, kind of uh, keep their the best targets, which be probably be like the squishy or squishy initiators like the Bat Rider and Sand King. Like that would those would be the best heroes for LGD to, to jump on first. They'll be able to do that soon too. The Ame getting that BKB. He'll be able to kind of force TNC into an unfavorable position. They'll either run away or they'll try to like group up a bit and help. And that opens up the spot for old 11 to get maybe a, a better Echo Slam. 
That pounding you hear, that's Earthshaker's war drums. He's prepping himself. He wants a kill. He wants it pretty badly. He wants to keep that enchant totem up for the extra hit, but Tim's just not going to show himself. He just sits on top of that uh, creep wave. He uses two different sandstorms to push out and then backs away. He doesn't want to put himself too far out there for a uh, potential pick against LGD. It is nighttime now. TNC just picked up a double damage onto the Verona, too, so I think they're going to be feeling pretty comfortable. Oh, they know Ame is not there. The Wolf scouted Ame. Oh. TNC want to go. With the Moonlight Shadow, they're going to be able to pick up Victoria. Telkinis is back, trying to hold him in place, but Tim's actually won something bigger, and he's going to be able to see maybe. That's a big one. The False Promise immediately going down. Tim's going to be able to get the follow-up disabled, and here comes Raven. Echo Slam onto Tim's, but it's not nearly enough damage to be able to bring down the big cores as they now come in. Raven's on full HP, and Chan Totem going to be able to slow him down. Cuckoo comes in with the extra bit of damage. Finally, Ame is here and managed to get 1437 in the back lines, but maybe he's still going to be ripped apart by the big hound. Raven, uh oh, he's out of shapeshift. And Ame has both Blink and a hammer coming up. Raven, can he survive through this one? They desperately need a bump back. The flame break's going to be able to get it, and he gets the armlet toggle off. So now maybe it's just going to be kited around. Jump forward and kills Victoria. Nice play from Cuckoo. Gets them both. LGD get wasted by TNC. As you said, like, they, they, they saw the wolf, or sorry, they saw the Sven. That's exactly the information they needed to force that fight. Unfortunately, Cuckoo gets a little ahead of himself. He actually runs into Maybe, who just TP'd in the shrine, uh, gives a kill back to LGD. But all in all, still a great fight for TNC. Just if one time, if Ame and Maybe are in the same fight at the <laughs> same time, there is no way the Lycan can do what he's been doing. And again, it's props to TNC for finding the optimal time to engage. And Raven being so adamant about using his will as the scout, it's, it's given them tons of information that's allowed them to take down two successful fights in a row. But if the war cry is there, the Lycan cannot just, you know, fly through. I guess, you know, Raven going back, not buying the BKB, opting for the Diffusal Blade himself. This could be an item that kind of changes the dynamic of the fights anyway, because if you can dispel the war cry, then it's pretty much as if Ame is not there in regards to you being able to hit somebody and deal a good amount of damage. The only downside is that if you get, you know, chain stunned, you can still be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. It also helps for targeting maybe right, because uh, all Leshrac cores eventually built a Yule Scepter, which looks like he's going to go for a second item. And you just want to kill that item, that hero as quick as possible. The damage over time is so tremendous. They're going to be able to get not just one, but two. They grabbed maybe with the lasso and also took out that Oracle, so no false promise save. He does have the Bloodstone Suicide, kind of minimize the uh, economical damage. TNT would have picked up so much gold from that kill. They are gonna be able to take the mid-tier one tower as well. But they're actually gonna try and chase down LGD. The arrow, oh, oh it nailed Ame. And old 11, he has to somehow stop this, but I don't know how. He throws out the Fissure, hits onto Cuckoo. Ame's gonna pop his BKB, but the Glimmer Cape keeps 1437 safe. They are just going to be able to kite around Ami, and he needs some sort of miracle couple of hits. Oh, nice blink away. Heads into the Roshan pit, blinks upwards, is going to be able to save himself over our, to our Bat Rider, who is uh, keeping Old Eleven in place. Sticky Napalm and a TP up. Man, are they both going to escape? That is legit from LGD. I thought they were both dead. The juke coming in from Ame was really nice, because as soon as Cuckoo leaped in, the Sven turned around and he says, oh, okay, you want to leap into me, I'll just man fight you, you know? So Cuckoo yeah. tries to use the vision of the Roshan pit the juke, and instead Ame, realizing that he's actually the one in trouble, uses it to uh, to get himself out. Very nicely done, like you said, from, from the side of LGD. Still, though, a lot of problems now. Because those two fights that TNC took were so favorable for them, like the Leshrac doesn't really have many charges on his Bloodstone, it's down to six. He bought Boots of Travel, which is fine. You know, they'll be able to play, I guess, a little bit of split pushing, but against the Batrider, who already has Blink and will soon have a four step, it's very scary to get out on the map like that. You're going to need a support behind you, I think, almost at all times if, if you want to start to play that kind of style of Dota. Yeah, I think LGD were looking at their strategy, really hoping that with the Leshrac and the Bloodstone pickup, as well as the Blink Dagger on Old 11, that they would be able to contest TNC four versus five. Right. a lot of the times, and they would get Yule Scepter and then make uh, the maybe Leshrac even stronger. But now they they have to fight, man. They've lost too many fights. They need this Sven desperately, who's still sitting way ahead of anybody else. Cuckoo is going to be caught. LGD, bring down that mid laner. How can he walk there? Trying to go for Manta. I'm I so no confused. Idea. I didn't Guess even know you path. could. I didn't know you could walk that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is actually a path that can go all the way over. Oh, yeah, it's the one tree block. I remember you yeah. can like tango and, and walk through. 
That's nice. Good stuff. It, it buys a little bit of time, I guess. There was like four heroes, I think. Three heroes that walked up top from LG to get that kill. And Raven has just not been under any pressure for a very long time. He's been able to freely walk into fights. He's always able to hit the target that he wants. They get the kill. They get out. And pressuring a tier two, while LGD themselves are looking at a tier one. TNC. What do they do in this position, though? They back up. Start prepping to defend their tier two. They just keep on going. I'd be pretty scared of getting caught if I approached that tier three at all. Especially since uh, Cuckoo only just now reviving. Did go for the Manta first, so I guess he's not really feeling comfortable about the Night Stalker Silence. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fine item to save yourself. If, that's, if you're looking for just solely a defensive utility, Manta is still fine in this game. It's just not useful against like Sven and Lesh and Earthshaker. The, the illusions don't really offer much aside from like split pushing potential and a, a way to dispel yourself. Four man smoke up with the Moonlight Shadow. So they're gonna run into Ame, be able to quickly burst him down. The Oracle's just a bit too far away. So big kill, big, big kill, because you know, bottom lane's decently pushed out, mid's already pushing in, Lycan just handled top lane, so they can go for an objective off of this one. Could even be Roshan. Roshan's actually up. We haven't talked about him. It's been a lot of fighting, so. That's exactly what they want. They even have the stolen Warcry on 1437. Doesn't seem like a huge spell, but 20 armor, 12 movement speed for eight seconds. Yeah. It's amazing. That's gonna be sick, especially for this spec. Yeah, exactly. Like, who does he go on? Uh, Ra Raven's like his defective e EHP just jumps up so high when he gets that that war cry because they're already sitting on 2,900 now. LGD, they're kind of uh, holding on, expecting some sort of mid push from TNC. That probably will come with this uh, fresh Aegis. Picks up. Oh, bike, bike, uh, run, Tim's. It's Yao, but now, oh, he's still stuck on the cliff. He needs a little bit of extra help. He gets another four staff. Cuckoo's gonna be the one to jump in. They have the sticky napalm slowing down these heroes' retreat. Plus, a bump back from the flame break is gonna be really good. Maybe he's looking for his opportunity. Maybe turn. Nice two man burrow strike. And now, with a jump in from Ami, he goes straight for a Raven. He looks to be able to bring him down, but it's not quite enough. The lasso from Sam H on the high ground. He's not even flying. He won't be able to TP out, though. Avoid stops him there. Raven going for Victoria. Actually, turns back for Ami because he realized he's low enough to be able to take down the big carry of LGD. Maybe gets spotted, but he does manage to complete his TP before the stun can come out. TNC take that fight one for three. Uh, LGD were just completely caught off guard there, not expecting the blink up to the high ground. The wards that were placed earlier from the side of TNC providing all the vision necessary to be able to take that team fight, and they just couldn't escape. There's too much chase potential on the side of uh, TNC. Tim's the blink dagger. Cuckoo being able to leap up to the high ground like that and just run him down. I can't believe that Batrider got the I'm stuck on cliff lasso. That his he didn't he like had Firefly for like one second or something when he got the lasso and then he oh, just okay. immediately lost it and he couldn't Yeah, he couldn't drag up to the high ground. But you know, at the end of the day it didn't really matter that much. They couldn't even take the Aegis off the Lycan. Like Raven is still walking around with the, the second life and now he's got a full BKB on top of this, so this this uh, Roshan into team fight has already secured TNC enough time to get Raven potentially one of the biggest power spikes that he's going to hit the whole game. 24 to 14, 28 minutes in, 5,000 gold lead for TNC, 3,000 experience too. Uh, Shiva's almost finished up for maybe that will help him so much against some of these heroes, but I still feel like he it's just like too much magic damage as well. You know, like the Murata coming in with the Fusible Blade and such. I, I do think that it's kind of at that point where the Alesh playing from behind. Is, uh, they're trying to go on Ame first. Now we'll see if this actually works for him. Maybe it's going to be able to sidestep the arrow. Ame's down to half HP already, but it pops the BKB in the God Strike and turns and fights Raven. He's now going to be able to see Sam H. He'll take that kill instead. Paul's Bomb is actually saving him. This drops lower and lower. And now BB's in a good position, a better position with a shrine activated, plus the Fall's Promise. This epicenter's not going to do anything. Ame's actually going to heal up a little bit. The arrow comes in, actually hits an ancient instead. Hold 11, holds on to the Fisher to be able to finish off Raven. Ages and 1437 gonna be hit by the enchant totem. Great extra kill from old 11 in the back lines. Tim, he looks to be able to catch Ami, does so successfully. Victoria's gonna be able to run himself out and a fire by Lasso. Just Lasso actually gonna be able to grab old 11. So LGD, that was actually an okay fight considering uh, the Aegis advantage that TNC had. 
They were able to fight around False Promise, and Shrine ended up being a two for three. Even two for three? Uh, they got the oh Aegis. yeah the Aegis. Yeah. that's right. So even with all that, you know, it, it it was a good fight, I guess, considering the circumstances. But TNC are still going to be feeling pretty good about their situation. Like Raven, he's still not really been killed yet. Outside, if you want to count the Aegis, he's going to get his uh, level 20 soon, so he can either get the evasion or the cooldown reduction. I'm not sure which you take in this case. You're probably not that scared to spend anymore, considering your item progression is just kind of outscaling him. So maybe you favor the, the cooldown and the BKB and the shape shift a little bit more. But it, like right now, getting the tier three, being able to open up the shrines once again, TNC dealing just another solid blow to LGD here. How did that fight go so well for, for TNT? Because I thought like they got the false promise off and then into the shrine with a less rack on top of the shrine as well, which is just added value since he uses so much mana. So like, I thought that would have been great for LGD. It, it looked pretty good. Uh, I might have to hold that thought as LGD looking like they potentially wanted to fight. But again, the vision around this area, one more just fades from TNC. The other one will be soon to follow. I think a lot of it has to do with the how Sven functions and fights, and like once he's kind of blown his load, he can't really do that much after the fact. Yeah. And if you look at Ame's items, he doesn't have the the damage build. He has the I need to stay alive build, which I think is not really what you want when you have an Oracle, because you buy yourself eight seconds of free auto attacks during False Promise. During that eight seconds, you want to kind of ensure that you're getting as much damage out as you feasibly can. And I think that Ame has been forced into this itemization path that's not allowing him to do it. Yeah, I, I would agree. It felt like Ame's damage is just pretty lackluster in a lot of these fights. I mean, even he turned and started hitting Sam H, and it took him so long to actually bring Sam H even close right. to death. The, the, the Lycan is just insanely tanky because his first two talents give him an insane amount of raw health. I think it's like 440 between the two of them. And then on top of that, you're building an armlet. BKB gives you a tiny bit of health, too. His strength gain is solid. 3.3 is actually quite high. But, yeah, it's it's looking a little rough for LGD at the moment. But if Ame can get to a damage item after his AC, perhaps then. Smoke with Moonlight Shadow again. Offering the opportunity for a clean initiation. Fisher does slow that down a little bit, but Victoria may be just an easy kill for TNT. They're going to group up quite a bit. Four snap, double four snap on a Cuckoo. Trying to get away from maybe, but it'll be run down by that ultimate. Ravy's actually going to go up for the back line. Just rips apart the Oracle with his BKB and runs out. You take one, I'll take one. But it's favorable for LGD for sure. Support for a core. They're pushing out. They can catch anybody else. Looks like maybe they can get 1437. Not going to be hit by the Fisher. Good juke with Glimmer Cape. And it's actually going to be able to steal the Fisher. Turn around on old 11. Looks like he'll be able to make it away. So the one thing that TNC need to be very careful of is the later the game goes, Lesh is actually a pretty potent late game hero. You know, you get the, the Octarine later on. You have the level 25 talents with your Edicts. You do it just a metric truck ton of damage. Like, it is insane how much you can do in a team fight, especially considering now he's got the Sheevas finished. He's sitting over 2k life. He's not kind of the fall over hero that he was once. Nice Yule Scepter usage there. He's going to be able to solve that Fisher attempt by Old Eleven. Sam is going to be able to hold him a little bit longer, but Ame comes in. So Old Eleven's not actually going to be able to die fast enough. Tim's maybe going to be able to finish off with the Epicenter. That was an awkward four staff, though. Wasn't the direction he really hoped. Ame pops the BKB and TPs out. So they do manage to kill Old Eleven for that. Maybe catch more. The Burrow Strike on to Victoria. Raven's Shapeshift has now run out, and Victoria not going to be able to complete that TP. Yule Scepter and not going to make it back to base fast enough. It's the Diffuser Blade setting him down so much. They're driving in so deep for this one, though, and Wait, Victoria what? actually does manage to get off, and now they're going to lose their Sand King potentially more. Sam H, not quite cut by the Shivas, does manage to blink ahead of that one. Jesus, they dove just all the way to the Tier 3 for a measly old Night Stalker. Surely a Night Stalker isn't that important. I think that they just assumed he was going to die. I don't think it was a level of importance. I just think they assumed, okay, this guy's got to be dead here, right? And then you just go a little bit too far, and, and the Sand King ends up paying the price. So all things considered, LGD able to buy themselves a little bit of time. Ame with the Assault Curass finish now, he's very close to a Chrysalis. And even just that one little thing can make a big difference, being able to get that crit during the God Strength, ensure that you can at least kill a target before your, your BKB and your Mask of Madness duration kind of fade away. It sounds to me, Drasko, that you're looking at this game that, yes, TNC, they won you know, a couple of fights and everything, and, and they 
got this network lead. That's good and everything, but we're getting late enough to the game where LGD are going to start taking the advantage, even if you're ahead in net worth. I just think that that's inherently how Sven kind of works, mm -hmm. is that if you get a lucky crit or two, it doesn't matter how much net worth you have, you're just going to die. Yeah. So the the emphasis that I guess I'm kind of putting on LGD is how many items... And the Echo have. Slam, a two-man Echo Slam, especially leading onto a Rubik oh. as well as Raven. He's not going to be able to get off the shapeshift here. Excellent move from LGD. They, they're going to force a buyback, I think. TNT did not expect an offensive maneuver like that. Oh, are they just going to let this go? They, I think... Okay, there goes the Lycan buyback. He has to shapeshift. Whoa, that epicenter. He looks like he got by the Yule Scepter, an offensive one that stalls up all of his magic damage there. Raven pops his BKB shapeshift. He starts going for maybe, but he's taking so much damage from both maybe as well as Ame. Ame was actually ripping him apart there with God Strength. So Raven's going to be forced to pop a shrine here, but the shapeshift is going to be running on cooldown pretty soon here. Oh my god, the net worth swing. They're going to lose some H as well. Yeah, maybe he's just going to run in. Minage to finish off Sam H. Cuckoo stunned by the Storm Hammer. He's going to go down as well. TNC may have just lost this match in the quarter of a minute. They're going to no lose buyback. Raven as well. That's no buybacks across the board. Batrider, Sand King, Lycan, no buyback. LGD are all a little bit low, but they're all still alive. Dear Lord, what just happened? That's a 10,000 gold swing in a minute. That... That smoke fake back that LGD just did just single-handedly won them the game. Like, they go back a little bit, they're not showing on the map for a while, they come in, they get the two-man echo, really clutch play from uh, from Old Eleven there, they force the Lycan to buy back and try to take the fight, but without the Rubik, they, they basically started a 4v5, right? And and after that, the the Leshrac was too tanky, they had the Solar Crest popped on him as well, in addition to the Shivas, no MKB in sight on the side of TNC, so maybe it was just sitting in the middle of all these heroes dealing so much damage, and they just couldn't really do anything about it. That Leshrac was actually pretty tanky now in these fights between yeah. the, the Shivas and the uh, aura of the Assault Kuras. You saw Raven try and hit him, and it just wasn't really doing much. Not in comparison to Ame, who's swinging his big blade at, uh, at the, the Lycan and just chunking him down. That was an insane turnaround from LGD. I mean, I kind of figured their team fight was still pretty good, even though they were behind, but I didn't expect quite that big of a swing and TNC committing like that when they have tier twos in other lanes. Like, I thought for a second that Raven was just gonna let it go because they have tier twos, and they wanted to potentially save the buyback for Roshan yeah. because they knew that it was gonna be up soon, but instead, they buy back to commit to a defense where the tier three was already dead. I don't know, that that was like a series of, of really unfortunate events there for TNC. I also feel like Cuckoo's just uh, beginning to really lack in scaling. You know, his damage in comparison to the Leshrax, very different. The Lycan, not outputting nearly as much physical damage as the Sven does anymore. It goes back to what you're saying, that just naturally LG's lineup will start taking over the game at this point. Well, I figured it would take over, maybe just not quite in that fashion. <laughs> yeah, just you know? not that quickly. You know, you're, you're thinking more like, all right, if this game is, you know, 45 minutes in, I think LGD probably have the advantage, but instead LGD's just like, all right, one fight. That's all it takes. God, it was so big. And now they're going to pop out of the Roshan pit. They want to go on this, perhaps? The wolf's going to be scouting out Ame. Okay, the sentry's down, so they're just dead. Still another Warcry. Always good. For TNC, they need it. Need it real bad. I like how maybe just pulled an Agonims and 2,600 gold out of nothing. <laughs> Almost level 25 as well. 18 Bloodstone charges. Remember, he was sitting at like 6 once upon a time? Yeah. TNC. I don't really know if they want to do this. Yeah. This is so tough. LGD seems so confident that they can win this fight. You know, like how fearlessly maybe he was sitting on the front lines. The same goes with Ame. Well, they have vision. I mean, either side of the river right now is warded. They have the sentry down too, just in case, you know, TNC were to be crossing over the map. Yeah. You look at TNC's vision, they got nothing. Like, they, they can't see without the wolves. If Raven doesn't have those things out and, and getting information, it's very hard for them to justify engaging. And because of that, LGD are just able to go claim the Roshan for free. TNC recognize that their best odds of taking a team fight is probably around defending a tier 3 tower. And again, the buybacks being expended earlier, no one has buyback on the side of TNC. Desperately need to get to the back line. TNC, if they hope to be able to win a fight, they have to get 
to Yao's Oracle. I think that's the, the biggest problem with taking that mid fight, right? You're talking about how the vision. So you have such a big vision advantage for LGD. It's so easy for Yao to just sit on the back line. TNT yeah. are going to go for whatever hero kind of shows itself, which is Flash Rack sitting on the front line. Oh, he just got like, the boop, fall fro false promise. He did get the lightning storm slow. I think that's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, baby. Slow for days. I mean, it's really good, for sure. I just figured, you know, since they were the ones now who have the the lead, that the diabolic edict in the sense of pushing would just be kind of tip the scale, I guess. Sure. And his decision making. But yeah, I, I would actually agree with that. I'm curious to see how it works out though, because I, I personally have never. Uh, I pretty much always get the edict. In team fights without creeps, Diabolic Edict would have been a lot more effective. And, like, say the Lycan start trying to go for the Leshrac. Yeah, yeah, That is sure. a defensive measure, you know. Just but you also all those explosions. You also have the perma slow now, and it's so easy to stun when you have a, a four second, seventy five percent slow. Like you can just lightning into stun into lightning into stun like over and over and over again. You just can't can't run away. He almost has Lincoln's as well, which will stop the initiation of both the Bat Rider as well as the Sand King. Rubik. Really cool to see Leshrac again, especially in a mid-capacity. Haven't seen that hero. I, I'm not sure how many times he's picked in the group stages. This is the first time you and I have gotten to cast him. Pretty cool stuff. And it's also, you don't... Ooh! Oh, the 11. He's been really fast on those counter blinks. You know, when he, we uh, had Tim's blink right here, and instantly, boom. Yeah. Oh, the 11 blink down. It seems like whenever he positions himself a little bit forward like that, he's got maybe like even queued up. Blink dagger just ready to spam that button real quickly. Dude's is awesome. Times. One of the best offliners, in my opinion. He was uh, a monster at the group stage. Shake. Maybe gonna be dragged all the way back to the tier four. This is why you need that Lincoln's but and Aegis will help you through the first round. LGD is just going to bang on that tier 3 in time. God strength now. Pop by Ami, but he's going to be kited around pretty heavily. They do have the false promise for maybe second life. So they'll get out, but the epicenter is going to be able to catch Ami. They don't have a save and grace here, unless a BKB and a Fissure block can actually keep them at bay. Oh TNC God. could not get around that one. That was so close. Oh. Ami, just 100 HP. I think that... TNC will be pretty happy with that. I mean, sure, they got some damage in the Tier 3, and LGD still maintain a decent amount of map control, but you take the Aegis and you don't lose anything. That's a win. Because now it's going to be a lot harder for LGD to justify walking up that hill again. I mean, if they want, they can commit maybe to buying the full Lincoln. He has the money for it, but then he won't have uh, he won't buy back. So they buy themselves some time. Uh, they have a smoke as well on LGD. Maybe going for another play here. Does time change anything for TNC? Are there any items that you feel like? I don't think so. Yeah. I really don't. They're I mean, all just kind of like minor, like, okay, that's okay. Uh, Telekinesis into the arrow, plus the lasso, but they do have the False Promise already in place. Tim tries to stop the back line, but he's a bit too late. They do manage to munch onto Yao, and are going to be able to catch Old Eleven as well. Diffuse Blade pops that Yule Scepter, and maybe, though, is going for the back line as well. He's going for Tim's right now, but Tim's is able to make it out with a Burrow Strike. That is a huge win for TNC, and exactly why the uh, Lincolns is not fully bought out for that Leshrac. TNC, they're not going to lay down in this game. They're not going to let LGD win. Going to man up, take the fight, win it. Going to be able to go for the high ground. They may be forcing the buyback. They manage to get the stun immediately onto Ame as he tries to go for Raven. A bump back. Oh, oh what an echo slam for both 11. Oh, the 11's revenge oh, on TNC. God. Jeez. Woo! And that is no buyback on the Marana, no buyback on the uh, the Lycan. I think that's game. Ame just immediately uses the boots of travel to get bottom, starts hitting the tier 3. Forces the Glyph even. Yeah, that, that might actually be the name. Well, Cuckoo has buyback now. They, they oh. might have a hold, the, the four heroes. They do have Lasso and Epi both available. If LGD are not careful about this, they do not have an Oracle. So there's not going to be any save for the Lasso. Damn, Lycan was just 500 gold away having a buyback was not actually due to time. So LGD are, st are still going to play it like pretty safe. They're expecting a 
I mean, you say that. Fly back. Here comes the lasso, the pullback here with the epicenter as well. Double four stabs. He's going to be able to pull on it all the way to the tier fours plus the arrow. That's the beautiful combination that TNC desperately needed to defend this push as only four. They're going to start chasing down Victoria. A buyback from Ame. He's already TP'd into the creep wave. It is on its way in now. Cuckoo's in trouble. They can't let Cuckoo die here, but he's chains done up for too long. A counter fisher from 1437, but he's all by his lonesome. A buyback from the Sand King is all that is there. The two of the supports against the horde of LGD. There's no chance in hell. They do have the liking up in five seconds, but come on, it's three versus five. How could they possibly do this? Even with the Lycan, it seems to be a little bit too much. Okay, one at a time, maybe one at a time. They're gonna be able to get Victoria here. Bring him down. Tower shots, oh, maybe. Oh no, oh no. Ami comes back in, almost kills the Rubik. He's been Yule Sceptered up, Telekinesis now. They are going to be able to get some chain stuns onto Raven. Glimmer Cape is going to buy him a lot of time until the vision comes out. Raven in trouble, down to half HP. Tim is also in some serious problems as that Fisher locked him down. Raven pops his head back out from the fountain, but he just cannot do enough. Tries to go for maybe again, but VKB wears out. Old Love instantly hits him with the Echo Slam, and that's it. That's game. TNC lose game number two as well as LGD get the full sweep. Really, I, I don't know. If I would say that it was like a super crazy comeback because it was only a 6k network lead, but in the fashion that LGD came back into the game was impressive. Yeah. Just the one really decisive fight. They knew exactly how far they could push it. They forced all these buybacks. Roshan spawns like at the, the perfect time. Everything about it just screams experienced team, right? Mm -hmm. Like they knew exact they knew what they wanted to do, they knew what they were gonna get after the fight. It just all kind of fell into place. And you got a feel for TNC because they did work for the first like 15, 20 minutes. They were winning their lanes. Uh, I guess Cuckoo didn't have a ton of farm, but he was getting a lot of kills. And everyone else on the side of TNC, Raven especially, he got his items up, everything seemed great. And then just off of the back of that one really bad engagement, it was almost like insurmountable what happened to them in that, that like two minute span. Yeah, TNC's reads on all those early game team fights was fantastic. With the Wolves scouting out, the support play was excellent in the first 20 minutes of the game. It did so much for them. Great epicenters, uh, great steals sometimes, like the Fisher steals from uh, 1437 were, were pretty effective in these team fights, but it just wasn't enough. And TNC and this on a loss despite having the uh, the hero kill lead of 34 to 33. Yeah, really good stuff coming in from LGD proving why they're top part of the group and uh, moving forward looking forward to seeing more of their play all right well that's it for this series we will have a very short break though as they've been banging out these group stage matches and seeing as we're on the last day i don't think they're gonna stop that pace just yet verdes pro versus invictus gaming this match will have very large implications for the top four group b so please stick around that series is coming up next